Hi everyone, thanks for coming back to visit with me again. This is Thanksgiving week uh, 2021 and there are some things that um, we can talk about for this Thanksgiving and I put together a little lesson for you that I hope will be a blessing to your heart, okay? You know, the uh, history of feasting and fasting is not a modern thing. We as Americans think of the first Thanksgiving as being with the pilgrims, and it, and it was in our country. But the history of feasting and fasting actually comes to us from the Bible. Uh, in the book of Leviticus, but, uh, God set out seven feasts that he wanted the Israelites to observe. These were opportunities for them to come together to be thankful and grateful for the things that had happened to him. In the spring, we have uh, four feasts that the Israelites celebrated in the spring. The most famous to us, of course, is Passover and the, um, the Feast of First Fruits, the Feast of Pentecost, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and taken as a whole, these give us a picture of the first coming of Jesus. He, uh, the Passover we know is associated with his death. First fruits would be his resurrection. When the Holy Spirit came, it came on the Feast of Pentecost. And in the fall, there are three fall holidays that God has set up. The Feast of Trumpets, which we associate with the rapture, the Feast of Tabernacles, and the Feast of the Day of Atonement. So today, for Thanksgiving, it is most closely related to the Feast of Tabernacles in the Bible, which is called Sukkot. That's the Feast of Tabernacles. And this was a wonderful, joyous occasion that the Israelites had. They would come together and they would build these little outside tents. It was like camping out. And the purpose of this Sukkot was for them to remember that God led them through the through the wilderness and provided everything for them. They did not have permanent housing. So the um, Israelites would build these little, um, you know, um, what would you call it? Like a little outside shed. And they would be decorated, fully decorated, and they would eat their food out there. Sukkot, Sukkot is also called the Feast of Ingathering and the Feast of Tabernacles, and it celebrates the autumn harvest. From the ancient children of Israel, it was a time of feasting and fasting and praising God and singing songs. It was a rich celebration based on praising God for his wonderful provision and loving kindness. It was an opportunity, and that's the word here. This was an opportunity to remember God's provision for them in the wilderness and for leading them to the promised land. The modern Jews today that want to celebrate Sukkot or the Feast of Tabernacles, they make these outside um, uh sheds and they decorate them with leaves and hanging lights and they put like picnic tables underneath of them and stuff. It's a very joyous occasion. The Pilgrims Thanksgiving was fashioned after Sukkot and it was similar in a lot of ways because number one they gathered outside just like the Jews did. They brought food just like the Israelites did. They offered prayers of thanksgiving for God's provision and for bringing them to the promised land where the ancient Jews thanked God for uh, rescuing them from Egypt and bringing them into the promised land. Our pilgrim forefathers thanked God for taking them from England and bringing them to their promised land, which was the new world or America. So, and they even called it little Israel. So they thanked God for providing them during the long journey over which they compared to the Israelites' long wilderness journey. Many similarities in the first Thanksgiving to this ancient biblical feast of Sukkot. This year, we have so much to be thankful for, don't we? We've struggled through a pandemic that's still ongoing. We learned to live with new restrictions and we found ways to survive and thrive getting getting emotional okay we've done without but god has filled us within we've had to learn contentment and find peace and get up and move forward and this was really hard it was hard for us during the pandemic wasn't it to find contentment and to 
gather our strength and to get up and move forward and, and go back to church and go back to some of the activities that we had. And for this, we're grateful. God did that for us. When we are thankful and show gratitude to God, powerful things happen. We are the ones that are changed within when this happens. When we are grateful, we are the ones that are changed from within. Being thankful for what we have brings us contentment. And contentment is necessary for us to rest. Many times in the Bible, God talks about bringing us into his rest. And what that is, is bringing, the, bringing us into an emotional state of contentment allows our bodies to rest. First Timothy 6.6 6 says, But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. That's very important. If you have the things that you need, you should be content. You should be content. Contentment is not the fulfillment of what you want, but the realization of how, of how much you already have. Um, many of us struggle with this issue of what we think we need to have to be content and also with the things there's can, you can be confused if you're not careful between things that you want and things that you absolutely need to survive uh, one of the uh, men that i work with with kid in kids church in our church teaches the children that we should be happy for the air we breathe and he'll say take a deep breath <sighs> and happy for the ground that we walk on and the kids stamp their feet. It's teaching them for the basic elements of our survival, we should be grateful. There are many things that we think we need that are just really the outside trappings. There's a great difference between what we need and what we want, and we have to separate those things. In Philippians 4.12, Paul writes, I know indeed how to live in humble circumstances. I know also how to live with abundance in every circumstance and in all things. I've learned the secret of being well fed and going hungry and of living in abundance and of being in need. I have the strength for everything through him who empowers me. Still, it was kind of you to share in my distress. Paul experienced periods of time when he was had great abundance when he was living in areas where a lot of Christians brought him a lot of things and gave him gifts and food and sustenance. He also found himself in times when he, he was in prison when he had very little. But what Paul says is, I, I know how to live in these changing circumstances. I know how to live when I have a lot. And I know how to live when I have little because basically it's really God's provision in both times, in times of, of having a lot and times of having a little. Thanksgiving reminds us of the bigger picture, that we belong to God and that we've been blessed with every spiritual blessing. God is constantly renewing us with spiritual blessing that we're unaware of. He's helping us with our emotions. He's helping us with our attitudes. He's helping us with the direction that we should go. All of these are spiritual blessings, peace, harmony, contentment. He's fostering these inside of us every day. Being thankful helps us to see God's provision for us. James 1.17 says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Everything we have, everything we use, everything we own, everything we eat, everything we possess, comes from God and not ourselves. Very important lesson. Everything we have, everything we are, everything we use, all of these are wonderful things that come to us as blessings from God. This is his provision for us. Giving thanks to God puts us in the center of God's will for us. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. When we put ourselves in a state of being thankful, there are, there's a difference between being thankful 
and being grateful. Being thankful is a feeling that we feel inside. Gratitude causes action forward. When we are grateful, it causes us to do something forward. The Bible records that Jesus gave thanks for the miracles that God allowed him to do. Before he performed any miracles, Jesus thanked God. He thanked God before he fed the 4,000 and again before he fed the 5,000. He thanked God before he raised Lazarus from the dead. He thanked God for the bread and the wine at the Last Supper. So he gives us this example of being constantly thankful. Jesus did not take that for granted. He was thankful to Heavenly Father for giving him the power to perform those miracles while he was on earth. Luke records this story for us. In Luke 17, 11 to 14, we read this story that is an illustration to us about this process of being grateful. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, 10 men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, master, have pity on us. And when he saw them, he said, go and show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. Now these lepers were, had to live in leper colonies away from society. They were considered unclean. They were considered contagious. It was a terrible situation to find yourself leprous in that day. Even children, if they were found to have leprosy, were taken from their homes and placed in these leper camps. So these 10 men standing at a distance because they were not allowed to get close. They had to call out, unclean, unclean. They saw Jesus coming, heard about him, and begged him for mercy on them. And according to Jewish law, if you had leprosy and then were cleansed, you had to show yourself to the Jewish priest who would then pronounce you clean. So he said, go show yourselves to the priest. And as they were being obedient and as they were going on their way, that's when they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, were not all 10 cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, rise and go, your faith has made you well. So giving thanks to God draws us back to God. Gratitude is a, is a, a movement verb. Being grateful causes us to return to God with thanksgiving. So only one of those men felt grateful enough. The others might have been thankful in their mind. They might have thought, wow, this is really great. Look, I'm no longer a leper. But only one was grateful enough to return and thank God for the miracle. What if God had taken away the healing of the other nine lepers because they failed to be thankful? We do have to wonder. Now the Bible says that did not happen and it wasn't in, in Jesus' intention to do that. But it is a thought that should cross our mind every now and then, if not at least once. What if God took away from me something that he gave me as a gift and I wasn't thankful? It's very important that we stay in the habit of thanking God daily for all the things that he provides for us. Even the simplest things I love hot water and I, I tend to like a bathtub and when I get in the hot water in the bathtub I say thank you God for this hot water. He gives us electricity. He gives us a bed, a comfortable bed to sleep in. We have medicines to help us get well if we're sick. We get to, if our eyes are still working, we get to see a beautiful sunset if he provides it. If a baby bird lands near us, we get to appreciate the beauty of that infant little baby bird. He gives us our pets to comfort us and give us love. He gives us our friends and our churches and our families. And the list could go on and on and on and on of all the wonderful things that God gives us as gifts. Paul admonishes us to thank God for all things always. It should be always that we are thankful. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. 
Psalm 100 is called the Thanksgiving Psalm. And this is a psalm that uh, many of us as children when memorizing Bible verses was something that was done, I think, more often than today. Um, this is a wonderful psalm of thanksgiving. And if you know this by heart, then you can say it with me. If not, you can read it on the screen. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. Whoever wrote that, whether it was David wrote the psalm or whatever psalmist wrote this, it's a wonderful thanksgiving psalm. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. So this week, what are you thankful for? What are the things that you can reach inside of yourself in the middle of this world, chaotic world, noisy world we live in with all of its struggles and political problems and division and uh, that we live in in our society today, very noisy, very at times upsetting. What are the things that you can reach inside of yourself this week and be thankful for? can be thankful for your health and your home and your family and for the good food that hopefully we're going to have on Thursday. As we think about those things, we can bring in mind many people that are perhaps dear to you, our teachers that are struggling to teach our children these days, our EMT workers who arrive when an ambulance is called and offer help, our pastors who are struggling with new ways of trying to reach people for Christ. We have to thank God for our Bible. I do that every day. So there are many ways that we need to be thankful, many things that we need to be thankful for. And in all of these things, we can offer up praise to God. We should also thank, jo thank God for the journey that we're on. Many times we don't do that. We don't thank God that from the time I was a little girl until the time I am today, you have held my hand. This Thanksgiving, you may think back over Thanksgiving dinners in the past. There may have been times that the rolls were burned. Maybe the turkey fell apart. Maybe the pie crust was soggy. We women, as most of the ones doing the cooking, we've had our shares of Thanksgiving dinners that had stuff that went uh, wrong and we laugh about it and it was a time for remembering those funny things or maybe the dinner was perfect in every way all part of wonderful memories it's a time for remembering and a time for gathering together even if it's different today way different than what it was before and for us those of us that are uh, seniors these thanksgivings are different uh, many of us uh, don't have the large family gatherings that we used to have. Some of us are not the ones doing the cooking. Some of us are not eating with our family members. We're eating with friends or those neighbors that gather together. It can be different, but it can still be a wonderful occasion. It's still a time for being thankful and grateful for all that God does for us. And we have to be thankful that God will fulfill his promises. And there are many promises in the Bible. God will fulfill his promises to you. God fulfilled his promises to Eve, that he would send us a savior. God provide, promised Abraham that he would make him a great nation. And he did. He promised Mary and Martha that if they believed in him as the power of resurrection, that they would see a miracle when he raised Lazarus from the dead. And they did. He told Martha, I am the resurrection. He who believes in me, though he dies, he will live. Promise after promise was fulfilled in the Old Testament. And when the time was right, God sent us the greatest gift of all, Jesus. Corinthians 9.15 says, Thanks be to God for his inexpressible gift. What would we do without Jesus? 
For those of us that are grieving or missing our loved ones, God offers us comfort. Thanksgiving and Christmas and Easter and some of these holidays are hard for those that are missing their loved ones. It's not easy during periods of grief to find anything to be thankful for, but it's during these particular times that God is closest to you. Jesus has promised never to leave us. He's promised to go and prepare a place for us. He promises to forgive our sins if we repent of those sins. He's promised to return and take us to be with him. He's promised to come again. And we are so thankful, thankful for these promises because it gives us this comfort that we talked about before, God giving us comfort. Those that are mourning this year and grieving, God promises that he will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. So these are wonderful promises that we have to look forward to this Thanksgiving. Okay? So I'm going to close this Thanksgiving lesson with a Thanksgiving prayer for you. Um, it's on the screen here. If you want to, you can read it out loud with me and we can pray it together. You can close your eyes and let me pray this for you. But I pray that this prayer will be a blessing to you this year. Okay? Thanksgiving Day Prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for the many ways you bless our lives. We know that every good gift comes from your hands. And even though life is not always good, you are good all the time. We are grateful for your love and faithfulness and for meeting our every need. Please bless and keep safe all who we hold dear. May we live in an attitude of gratitude each day of the year and never take anything for granted. We thank you for Jesus in whose name we pray. Amen. Okay, friends, I wish you a, a blessed Thanksgiving week. I hope that this lesson has been a blessing to your heart, that it will put you in the frame of mind of being grateful and thankful all week. Reach deep inside of you and let that thankfulness and that gratitude flow forth. Bless others with your attitude of gratitude, okay? And we will see you again here next week, and I'll bring you another Bible story. Thank you and have a blessed week. I love you all. Bye for now.